People are moving like crazy. And for the last four months, closings are down 50%. It's our number one city, and revenue's down cut in half. Right. LA, huge, huge. Uh, obviously not for the Dan Beer team and for the Kyle Whistle team, but for the general population, we're seeing a major change. So here's the deal. All the people who said, I love my broker, I love my office, I love my friends at the office. That's exactly what I said to Kelly Williams from 2000 to 2009, and I didn't move. But in my pain, I was no longer selling for 100 plus homes a year, selling 100. I was no longer making $3.8 million a year. I was way down, I was actually, in my pain, I go, I need to do something different. I'm gonna open my mind to EXP. In that case, it was called KW. It's always you know, CB, C21, but it was KW. And I, I wasn't against them, but what's gonna happen in the next 24 months is there gonna be a migration to EXP like you have never seen. We have done well in a boom market to dislodge people from what they were doing. My joy with Keller Williams was at level 10 six years ago when I made the move. And I felt sorry for an empathy for anyone not at Keller Williams. And I knew one thing, they weren't very smart. If you're not at Keller Williams, you just don't get it. It's the greatest planet on, company on the planet. There's nobody even close. They're in their own universe. But I was way into Mega Camp, Family Reunion, all the masterminds and all that. But after leaving Remax for 13 years, I left up nothing because I owned nothing. After spending nine years in a company I was passionate about and loved, and it sponsored 55 agents to earn 700 a month on average, probably share. <laughs> or like David Gagnon said, $11 a month or whatever. My first check in ESP was $5,000. The next revenue share check was $10,000. By the fifth month, it was $27,000. By the 13th month, it was $55,000. I came to ESP for one thing and one thing only, the avatar world. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> the 10 classes a day that we had world. No, there's, Kevin Williams was far better at that. I didn't care about that. I was over at Keller Williams. Loved it, but I came for the stock ownership, and I came primarily for the revenue share. I just got it. And I treated it like a business from day one. So let me ask you a question. Have you capitalized your business? Or are you running a little lawnmower gag with your lawnmower in the back of a truck and buying some gag? Have you capitalized your business? The first thing I do is borrow $100,000. Because I just, if I'm gonna fly somebody out or buy, buy 28 people at Ruth Chris, have 18 prospects there, buy them all dinner, I did. Take mail for now, buy them all dinner, I did. Fly in places, pay for hotel rooms, I did. I borrowed $100,000 so I could just not worry about it. I capitalized my business from day one. Had to pay it back in 90 days at a 10% of the gross. So I paid back $110,000 90 days later. Then after I paid it back, the next day he lent me $100,000 again at a 10% due in 90. The first year I borrowed $400,000 and I paid back $440,000. Now he lent me the same $100,000, a friend of mine, four times. He received $40,000 for that $100,000 over the course of the year. I paid, how many of you would borrow $100,000 with $40,000 of interest year one? Would you do that? I did it, I'd do it again. That was my option six years ago because I was hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt with taxes. I was buried with the IRS, buried. And I'm like, man, how do I get out of this? And it was a few years after coming to HP that I was going to pay off the IRS. And then I moved to Puerto Rico and said, que pasa? <laughs> <laughs> See you later. So let me tell you this. There, there, there's a shift, and the swell's coming. And if you're smart, you're going to realize the season you're in. And, and November, December is, November, December is always recruiting season. But then January, people get, they get retroactive. They think about the year, what's happened, what hasn't. They get, uh, you know, they start thinking um, about what's going on. Their goals or dreams that I achieve, my goals that I get back. Do I need to change? And that's when I changed. It was October 2009. It was in the fall. I started to get reflective. That was the word retroactive. Reflective. And I made the move. I cannot tell you the amount of agents that are going to come. Uh, Elizabeth Riley, is she here? <laughs> she said a great thing yesterday. The untouchables are now touchable. People want to send you, they're asking you about ISAs, but secretly they want to ask you about EXP. And 
you've got to be ready for those conversations. And so I'm, I'm going to challenge you. The 100 foot swell up is coming. You need to paddle now. You need to go now. With the decisions you make in the next two or three months can change your grandchildren's future. Literally the next two or three months. Um, a lot of you are, are gonna go to Cabo and EXP shareholder and build. That's awesome. Those things are like April, May, and July. But I'm gonna be in Maui in January. And I'm gonna have, hold on. Some of you need to ignite people. What do you mean to ignite people? You need to activate people. Um, Colton, where's Colton? Stand up, Colton. Okay, this is a great example. Don't talk to me about rep share. Don't talk to me about any of this. But if, if, if it was me, I would fly people like, oh, hey, I'm paying for college with my 100,000 at, 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 at a 40% interest. I'm paying for your event, I'm paying for your hotel, I'm black car service, pick you up, just come, dude, come hang out. I'm gonna see the producers. And I just trick them there. <laughs> <laughs> but I would get in there, but give, give Colton a hand. <laughs> and then you look for a for town debt, then you attach yourself to it. Gail DeMarco, we are doing a mastermind in Scottsdale. You heard uh, Ben Siku. Ben Siku, you still here? Right here. He was in front of me, sorry. <laughs> so he said it was at a mastermind. Was it Scottsdale or Las Vegas? Hard Rock, yeah. And he's standing next to Rob Flick, right? And, and he, he's like, how are you doing? He didn't know who Rob Flick was. And Rob Flick just looked at what he did. And he just he, he got it. So I bring Gail. Gail. I, I paid for her kite surfing lesson. I got kite surfing lessons at 700 bucks. It's not rebuttable. No problem. I'll call them, put on my Amex card, pay it. They don't have to. They don't have to train you. They get even 700 bucks for doing nothing. Will the kite surfing company be excited? Yeah. You are going to buy a ticket, airfare, and hotel. And get your butt. She can afford it. I didn't pay for that. I said go. She was like, hey, you're kind of bossy. I said get your bottom to Scottsdale. She came. She was, oh my god. I get it. Some of you are trying to find leadership and activate the ones you already have. But you're gonna wait till April or May for shareholders or July for build. And you half the year's gonna go by. I will be in Maui with 400 of the top leaders. And all you have to do is bring Gail. See, Gail came back a year later with 150. Because I knew she had the talent, but she wasn't activated. Colton has the talent. How do you think Colton has talent? Yeah. But he wasn't activated. How many think Vincent Koo had talent? Yeah. But he wasn't activated until he went to the Red Rock, or the Heart, was it the, yeah, the Red Rock in Las Vegas, and he got activated. Activate your talent. Now, if you can't afford to go to Maui, don't. If you go on the website, it's a shared to Black Friday. It's a thousand a night. That's what it costs. Very expensive. Just the room is seven thousand bucks. So we have a group rate of four seventy-five a night. But you show up there, and they hang out with Glenn Sanford. They hang out with Dave Kennard. They hang out with the who's who of EXP and they get activated. Or you bring a guest from Remax or Sotheby's or Callaway's and they get activated and you pay for them. I just paid for a guy to go to Cabo last year. If you didn't pay for me, well, I don't pay for him, but I live for town. I pay for this guy. I paid for his airfare. I paid for his hotel. I paid for a private car service to take him there. I paid for the event. I've always invested forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 into every event I've ever gone to. I've been all in. See, this is a business, and I invested in it. Guess what? He's doing event, event, uh, events down in LA with Leo Robles, and every time they do an event, they have a thousand people show up now. And this guy started with us last April, and made us take out the Cabo because they knew we needed to take that 12 inch truck from here to here. Let the events do the heavy lifting. Ask me which EXP con I've ever missed? Never. Which EXP shareholders I've ever missed? Never. Which mastermind I've never missed one? I've been to the lake houses, I've been to the beach houses. I've been to Cabo. I'll be in Paris, New Year's Eve. Next New Year's Eve, a year from now, we're gonna do a champagne toast on the Eiffel Tower. Anybody up for that one? <laughs> you have to have 25 FOQAs and 200 your group, you can come. And you have time to get that done. And if it was me, if I was sitting there, I'd be, excuse me, I'd be sitting in this audience, I'd be like, I'm gonna be there. If I have to kill somebody, <laughs> like I'm going to be there. And what is it about? It's just about being together. And there might be just like 20 or 30 of us that are crazy, but we're going to be in Paris after Christmas, and we're going to toast each other and have dinner on the Eiffel Tower. And I'm like, I'm going to be in that room. Let's get yourself in the right room. And I'm preaching to the 
Thank you. So here's the, but here's the problem. Write this down. It's called the tyranny of the urgent. You're so busy with your listing. You're so busy starting that property management company, that mortgage company, that title company. You're so busy flipping homes. You're so busy trying to do 100 listings this year instead of 60. And so be careful what you serve. Because listing a $5 million house and getting paid a quarter million dollar commission is a good thing, right? Double ending it, whatever's a good thing. But what does it mean five years from now? Nothing. So I want to challenge you. Why I believe your time is perfect. Your time is perfect because there's 208 industrialized nations if you ask Syria. And there's about the best estimates, and it varies, people say different numbers, like 25 million agents. Or you could say there's 15 million or 20 million. There's 2 million in India. Okay, but there's 25 million best estimates worldwide. We have 86,000. I've been saying 87,000 for a couple weeks now. <laughs> Oops. Anyways, <laughs> just found out it's 86. I'm always ahead of it, you know? But here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're going to have that 200,000 agent mark. We're going to hit that. We're going to hit five. And we're going to hit a million around the globe. And we're going to be in 100 countries. There's 900,000 coming. But if you sit there and tell yourself, I'm too late, guess what? You're, co you're correct. You are too late, but that's your mindset. But you know what? There's a 1.5 million agents out there that are gonna be in pain over the next 24 months. And it is on the platter, and guess what? Pain will get people up off the couch. Pain will cause them to leave brokers they love. I, I, and in my case, the opportunity, I was not in pain. I was, uh, yes, I had the tax debt, but I was in love with Keller Wings. But the opportunity is what I saw. So, so what is the job? What is the scope of work you need to do to have an incredible revenue share organization. By the way, everybody, you do not have a downline. Please eliminate that word from your vocabulary. It is, um, it's put, it sounds terrible. Oh, here, they're in my downline. Does that sound good? You're gonna say, they, yeah, these are in my downline. No, they lose the word upline. I'm your business partner, because I own stock in this company, whether you're in my organization or not. I am your business partner, and you're my business partner. Always introduce people, um, John Fletch as your business partner, but he's not in my upline. He's your business partner. Words matter. Eliminate it. Downline and upline reeks of network marketing. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with network marketing. I'm proud of people to get off their bottom and do something network marketing. From Mary Kay to Amway to Tupperware to prepaid legal, whatever. God bless them and good for them, and I will buy their products and support them. I have no problem with network marketing. You know, those people who succeed work their tail off to get there, just like we do. We're not a network marketing company. We don't market products, goods, and services. We're a real estate company that shares revenues back to our agents for seven generations. And Keller Williams is not a network marketing company. They've been doing it 25 years. So here's the deal. The job, the scope of work, I have great news for you. Write this down. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. What do you mean? If you will go sponsor 25 agents, write this down, with good energy, Rob Blake taught me that, who sell at least 10 homes a year, in the next five months, you're done. You're actually done. I believe, I believe that was, that's what I did. I sponsored 25 agents with good energy who were selling at least 10 homes a year, if not 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70. I would say most of the 49 agents I sponsored, were at least say 25. I had so much momentum, I went to 49 at the end of my first year. But in 25 and 5 months, the key thing I did was like taking this Red Bull and Curtis Johnson mentioned, mentioned early, and then just shaking it, popping the top in five months. There was a chemical reaction. If you sponsor 25 in the next year, it won't work. 25 in the next two years, it won't work. You need to focus. You need to realize you're in a wave that can take you to your wildest dreams or drown you. You gotta get all in, capitalize your business, staff your business. From day one, we had onboarding people onboarding our agents. I have never relied upon ESP. I get so mad at ESP, they fumbled a broker, their team onboarding, Ugh, I'm so mad. <laughs> victim, you're a victim. Why don't you have an onboarding? Well, oh, I shouldn't have to do that. Okay, keep feeding on the ESP. And they have 2,200 employees. They, they hire people and they do their best sometimes. Have you ever hired someone? I've, I had to let someone go this summer. Thought she'd be great. She wasn't. We let her go. 
It's not bad in HP. It's 100% responsibility. Why don't you? Well, I can't afford it. Do you have a significant other? Yeah. Maybe they would be willing to learn how to do onboarding. I'll take Christina and Sophia. Um, I have two full-time onboarders. And we'll teach them how to onboard. We would never hand that over to uh, EXP. I'm just not going to take the chance. We worked way too hard to get them. Three months, six months, a year, sometimes two, three, four years, and you fumble on the one yard, and you have the audacity to get mad at EXP. Man, you own it. You, I, do you have a business or a freaking paper route? <laughs> Step up. You, every one of you should have an onboarding person. Well, we didn't have money like you. I didn't have money either. I borrowed $100,000 at a 40% interest rate. If I said, I'll let you 100 grand, but I'm going to charge you $40,000 this year for that 100 grand. You guys think 7% interest rate's expensive? Try 40%. <laughs> I took that deal and I'd do it again. Because they give me the capital to do what I need to do that first year. And, and the Lions Real Estate had been in Sacramento for 50 years. They had 1,200 agents. Then my first year, I had 875. Write this down. Brent was extreme, radical, completely freaking nuts. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Michael Phelps was that way. You know, Jocko, whatever. Anybody doesn't great, it's a struggle. You gotta get a little crazy, right? Richard Simmons, the exercise guy, he was crazy. But he succeeded. He laughed his way all the way to the bank. And you know what? Is if you're a recruiter, you need to go, I want to be a recruiter. Oh, why? Because I don't want to, really, you know, I don't want to be that guy around town in Boston and West Palm Beach. I don't want to be that gal that in um, Miami or in Dallas. You know, you know that guy, that gal. They're always trying to get everybody. And I go, well, hey, that's pretty narcissistic. You're so worried about what everyone's thinking about you. I am that guy. I'm an absolute rabid recruiter. And here's what recruiting is. If you recruit people, they trusted you. Maureen Barker recruited me to Keller Williams after two years. It took Sheila Fergeron, we knew not much about it, two weeks, because it was so obviously going to be different. So 